This is Fred from North 40 Fly Shop, and today I'm going to be tying a fly I call the Flash and Grab Intruder. This is a great uh, fly, or at least I found it to be successful uh, when I fish in the fall in Alaska for, it catches rainbow trout, um, it also catches silver salmon, um, and it will catch Dolly Varden char as well. So you can get all species on this same fly, and it's worked for steelhead in uh, several different river systems as well. So I'm gonna start out, uh, the first thing to do is add hook to my wire, and I'm using Senyo's intruder wire for size six hooks or larger. Uh, your hook choice is actually an interesting deal because um, I have found that depending on the way the fish are eating the fly, I will often change my hook choice. Uh, one of my favorites, if the fish are eating well, where you're getting really positive takes, I like these uh, no escape hooks. And it's a barbless hook with a pretty good upturn and a straight point. If the fish are, or I mean, if it's just your preference to use the Gamakatsu octopus hook, this is always a good choice. It does have a little bit more of a beak to it, and I've sometimes found with rainbows, they will seem to slide off that beak without getting hooked. And if that's happening, then I'll switch to a pointed hook that doesn't have a beak, and this uh, drop shot hook works really well. So usually I'll fish one or the other of these hooks, and if I'm missing fish, I'll just switch to the different one because uh, it, there's nothing worse than getting grabs and not getting positive hookups. But this uh, no escape hook has actually been my go-to for the most part lately. So I'm gonna grab a 25, miller, uh, 25 millimeter Waddington shank and stick this in the vise. Actually, probably put it this way so you can see it better on camera. And then I've already got my hook prepped on a piece of wire. I'm gonna want that uh, hook to extend back about a little over a half inch behind my shank. We're just gonna go ahead and run down a thread base. It's the middle of winter in Montana. For some reason that always makes me want to fish for or tie flies that I'm gonna be fishing with in Alaska. All right, so I've got enough of a thread base that this should hold my wire pretty well. Once you get it started, if you need to pull a little bit to adjust it, if, as long as you got a few loose wraps, you can kind of get it set right where you need it to be. This shank is long enough that this wire is probably not going to need any additional glue. There's a lot of pressure with all these thread wraps locking down into that coating. So this is not going to pull off of there. But if you uh, are more comfortable giving it a little run of super glue before you uh, proceed from this point, you can go ahead and do that. If I'm tying a bunch of these flies, a lot of times I'll prep these shanks ahead of time and then uh, I'm just ready to start tying. So I'm just going to put in a little cluster about an inch and a half long and get this spun up. What I'm doing is I'm just building a little bulge here at the tail end of the fly and then when I get my first layers of flashaboo on that will just give it a little spread. Get a little more water movement through it that way. Looks about perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna grab a little clump of flashaboo. And I don't want a really big clump. I'm also gonna be doubling this over my thread. So whatever I grab is gonna be multiplied by two. So I'm going to get that place tied in and then as I get right up near my bump, it's going to be mostly on top of the hook, but I like to give it just a little bit of a spread. And then we're going to cut that off about two inches long. So next I'm going to throw on some dumbbell eyes. 
This is a 3 16 eye in blue. Give it some good crossing locking wraps here. One nice thing about these shanks, since it's a double, double over platform, those eyes get secured real easily and they're always oriented just where you need them. And then our next step, we're going to grab some polar chenille in black. This is just going to fill in a little bit of the space on the body. I'm just going to tie that in behind the eyes and then wrap back up. Make sure I've got it really good. Throw that in the bobbin cradle. And then we're just going to spin that around. After a couple spins, I like to just kind of sweep all the little tips forward. You can also kind of tug on it, make sure it's really getting seated well. That way fish teeth will have a little less impact on it. Take that all the way up to just a little behind the eyes. All right, next stage is I'm gonna make another little ball of dubbing right behind the eyes. This one's going to be just a little bit bigger than the first one. I'm going to end up with about two inches of material. And I'm just gonna build this up right behind the eyes to create another thick point to uh, spread my next layer of flashable around. First layer of flash blue is going to be on the bottom. I'm going to bring my thread, thread forward to the eyes and I'm going to pull out just a little bit of purple. This is just going to add a little bit of accent at the throat. This fly is mostly blue and black, but just a little bit of purple doesn't hurt. What I've found with this color phase combination here is that as long as you're mostly black, you'll definitely be able to catch rainbows. If you uh, get it too flashy, they'll usually leave it alone. But as long as you have a little bit of blue and a little bit of uh, purple flash on there, you definitely uh, will get more eats from the salmon. So that way you get, uh, get to cover all your bases. All right, so on the top, I'm going to run out a layer of blue. And again, I'm running, I'm starting my tie off point in front of the eyes here. And this one's gonna run back and extend about a quarter inch from the tail. And then before I really have it locked down with my thread, I'm just gonna spread that a little bit. Then I'll put a little more thread pressure to kind of hold it in place. And then I'm gonna finish topping that off with just a little more black. Keep 
keeping this last layer fairly sparse. I got a little water here. Let's see if I can get some static out of my way. And this last layer is going to be again just a little bit shorter. So this one's going to extend about a quarter inch inside of the blue. Now we're done with our three colors of Flashaboo and then to finish this off we're just going to finish out the head with more of the Fusion Dub. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build another dubbing loop. And I'm going to do that just behind the eyes. I'm not going to run that dubbing loop really tight. So I'm going to want these fibers to kind of pick out a little bit. I'm going to get a couple turns behind the eyes and then I'm going to bring it in front. Finish that out. Now after this point, you can leave that head fairly small, or if you want a little more bulk in your head, you can just place tie in a little bit more dubbing. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and place tie in a little bit more on the top and the bottom. Then I can get just a little bit longer sweep. finish with the fingers and then I usually polish this off with some uh, Lunar UV. Give it just a little brushing. And there we have the flash and grab in the blue and black with just a little bit of purple.